can see the focus on Becky's face. She's only 19, and that makes her the youngest home cook we've ever had in this kitchen. My key ingredient's beetroot. My family really loves it. It's a fall type of thing. My sister eats it like candy. I'm not a typical 19-year-old cook. People totally underestimate me. I'm not stuck in my ways at all. Like, I don't really have ways yet, because I'm only 19. Five minutes! You have five more minutes left! Keep on moving. You can feel the tension. You can feel the pressure mounting on you. Oh, here come the shakies. Yeah, everybody's cooking for their life. Work with speed, handle the pressure. Down to the wire. You have one more minute left. Come on, one minute. No, 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 no. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! <laughs> Woo! Remind me of your signature ingredient, Becky. Uh, beetroot. It has a monochromatic look that feels modern. And how did you wish to cook the tenderloin? Medium rare, hopefully. Very nice. The beets, you have respected and elevated their flavors. Seasoned well, but we have a problem here. The problem is that there's one less apron to fight for. This is your express pass to the top 12. I'm so excited to get a white apron. Good job, Becky! Way to go, Becky! I'm the youngest person ever to get a white apron. It's crazy. My parents are gonna be so proud. Hi there, Becky. So you got uh, sweet, so what are you cooking? I'm gonna do a dark chocolate and coffee eclair. And you're gonna be making a shoe pastry? Yeah, that's, that's a tricky end. one to make. Yeah, I didn't use a recipe, so it might not work. You didn't use a recipe? I know what it looks like, so hopefully it'll work. Fingers crossed it all goes smoothly. Keep an eye on the clock. I make shoe pastry quite a lot at home. I mean, I find it pretty easy, but <laughs> some people have a really hard time. I know what I'm doing, I'm not stressed, so. You have 10 more minutes left. 10 more minutes. Great coffee dish. Oh, God, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Now it's just a matter of putting it all together. Becky, it looks like she's done, finished. She is unflappable. It seems like nothing rattles Becky. She's always in the zone. Becky might have enough time to actually make herself a cup of coffee. Not quite. That ice cream is still not set. This ice cream needs to speed up. Oh, man, this is cutting it close. Becky. Don't really get excited about things, but I'm shaking on the inside. It's coffee and dark chocolate eclairs. The recipe you used was right off the top of your head. Yeah. For a classic shoe pastry, something that pastry chefs work relentlessly at to perfect for years. Yeah, I just did it by eye. That's pretty impressive, I would say. Let's take one of these, open it up, and see how it looks from the inside. Look at that. Pretty full in there. The pastry cream is incredibly soft. And you have a good balance of coffee in there. And that dark, bitter chocolate works really, really well with it. I think you could have cooked the shoe pastry buns a little longer. Yeah. But it is very good. Which is why I had to have a second bite. Let's taste. Watch out behind you. Incredible. The coffee flavor just pops. The pastry cream is beautiful, smooth, and velvety. It really is incredible. Thank you. Most of the home cooks came out with baskets full of food, but Becky, she had nearly a handful of ingredients in her basket. I think four grapefruits and half a dozen eggs. She's obviously going sweet. 
I don't want to see an apple pie. I don't want to see plain burger and fries. This is not the time to be safe. I'm going to elevate pie by not just making the traditional mold. It's pretty much a deconstructed pie. I'm going to make like a grapefruit pie with basil jelly and meringue. It is pie at its core. It's just completely elevated. I've never had grapefruit basil before, but I think it'll work. Basil goes with most fruit. Hi, Becky. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are good. you? Good. No, what are you making? A pie. Hi. <laughs> Could you settle down? The excitement is overwhelming. Hi. <laughs> What kind of a pie are you making? I'm going to make a grapefruit curd with grapefruit and basil jelly and a meringue. That's not your average diner pie. The baked pie in one hour, do you think it may be a risk? Instead of a crust, I'm going to do a crumble instead. I baked a pie years ago, and it took less than an hour, Alvin. So show a little face. Yeah. <laughs> Go get them, sister. <laughs> Thank you. Becky, I want that pie to jump. Don't listen to a thing he just said. Just ignore it. <laughs> the next cook chose a dish often described as humble. And the home cook who made it is... Becky. It was really good to hear my name. I'm just hoping that they like it. I made grapefruit and basil pie with Italian meringue and a crumble. This is no humble pie. The presentation is beautiful. An Italian meringue. Why not French meringue? Italian meringue goes like marshmallowy and has a different texture. I like that marshmallow and that beautiful candy grapefruit jelly. It balances out the tart from that grapefruit. Are you sure you're 19? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're making me proud. Where did you learn how to plate like this? Well, I'm pretty much self-taught. It's really sophisticated. A lot of layers of flavor going through there. This shows a tremendous amount of skill. You have a lot of talent. Thank you. I'm so proud of myself. Colville Bay oysters prepared three ways. First, we have a Japanese-inspired preparation, a sake poached oyster with Asian pear slaw with a perfectly shelled lobster claw. I have absolutely no experience with oysters. It's very out of my comfort zone. The next oyster is served raw, but topped with an intricate mignonette, champagne jelly, red tobacco, and chervil. Feels like there's like three dozen things going on in each little teeny tiny oyster. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff. The third and final oyster is our take on oyster Rockefeller with bechamel, spinach puree, sauteed oyster mushroom, and a blend of cheese and toasted panko breadcrumbs. This challenge is going to be quite difficult. Not only does it have to taste good, but the oysters have to look as gorgeous as we see them. They also have to prepare a raw oyster, and there's nothing simple about that task. A beautiful, classic mignonette, which is usually done with red wine, shallots, very clean, very fresh. You've got to make sure the mignonette does not have too much acidity. It has to be perfectly balanced. Lots of potential for mistakes here. Does it smell good, Becky? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Becky. Hi. How are you doing? All right. First pressure test. Nervous? Uh, not really. Not really? So, are you confident? Yeah. Well, have you ever cooked an oyster before? Uh, no. No? And you're not nervous at all? No. <laughs> Cold as ice. I tell you, don't be nervous, but you should always care. Remember that. Yeah. All right? You're a savage, go, Becky. You're a savage, Becky. I want the judges to know that I can handle the pressure. I do have emotions, I just don't show them. Two minutes, you have two more minutes left. Two minutes, get those oysters plated. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, Becky, yeah, Becky. It's so important to get the right ingredients on the right oyster. Kagan has a tendency of forgetting things. Look at the oyster. He shucked the most, but he forgot to release them. Let's go, Kagan. 
I need to take my time with this. If I rush it, Oyster's gonna look terrible. Unshakable Becky. It looks like you carbon copied the plate that we showed you. Well, let's see how your raw oyster tastes. The mignonette is expertly done. Good heat, the peppercorns are finely ground. It complements that oyster beautifully. Sauce. Good flavor, well seasoned. Great combinations of the cheese, the breadcrumb, and finally that mushroom. This oyster Rockefeller, it's one of the best I've ever had. Wow, Becky. Very well done. Thank you. That's it, Becky. Oh, Becky. Becky, you were the only one that had that oyster in the grasp of the pincers of the lobster, as was shown. Crisp and crunchy, the way it should be. Nice seasoning on the lobster claw, but it is, in my opinion, slightly underdone. You're not making it easy. Good job, babe. When are you gonna give me five bream and one lamb? As soon as we can get the, uh, the bream from over there. Okay. Eugene, how many clams are in this pan? I have four on the pan. No, Eugene, listen to what I'm saying before you answer. How many is in this pan? How many orders? It's for five. Okay. Becky, are you in charge now? Seems like it. Seems like it, right? Looks like it. I'm having a hard time balancing all of these different things. I can't pay attention to Chef Claudio, and I can't pay attention to the rest of my team. Eugene, we yeah. have two orders of clam and only one fish. Okay, four fish are about to come. Eugene, you got that? Kagan, take control. Becky, do you want to take charge? Do you need me to? Eugene listens to you, and you're more composed. Eugene, I'm in charge now. I'm excited to be team captain. I'm going to whip these boys into shape. Thank you, Becky. The best chance we have of winning is with Becky at the helm. Tegan, where's the lamb at? Two minutes on the lamb. Get the plate ready. Are the lentils done? Yes. Two sea bream right here, and then I'll put the other fish. Need to cook more. The key to running a professional kitchen is yelling. <laughs> Two lamb. Nice looking lambs, Becky. Thank you. How long in the bream? The bream is about two minutes away. Becky's team captain, and it's going much smoother. I need those two breams fast. Yep. Enjoy this. Michael. Finally. Yeah. All right, Becky, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Your team is catching up now. That was a smart move by relinquishing control of your team and giving it to Becky. This is the right thing to do. I'm like, hashtag Team Becky right now. Just like, yes, you go, girl, yes. Two lamb, Becky, and you are clear. No, Eugene, tops up. <laughs> it feels amazing to be in a professional environment. Beautiful, guys. It feels really natural. I'm beyond proud right now. It's amazing. Thank you, chef. All right, that's it. Service is over. Bring it in, guys. <laughs> Good job. Good work, guys.